okay, doing, Braz doing business in Brazil is complicated. For sure it's complicated. It's a little bit confusing, yes, but doing business in Russia, in China, in India is also very difficult. I'll talk now to André Perfeito. He is the chief economist at Gradual Investimentos. Do you believe in a recovery this year in our economy? Well, it's very difficult to believe that we're going to have a strong recovery in Brazil economy in 2017. Uh, my forecast for the Brazilian GDP this year is only about 0.1%. The central bank forecast is around 0.5% and some more pessimist economists are forecasting below zero again in Brazil. The key question in Brazil right now is that we have a very weak demand of the economy. If you see the family, the household consumption is very weak because we have a very high unemployment rate, we have the real wages are falling in Brazil very fast, and even the investments in Brazil, if you, we saw only the, the gross formation of capital in Brazil, it's not very well, it's going very well right now because we have um, the, util the utilization of the capacity of the Brazilian industry is very low right now. So if you see all the components of the Brazilian, the domestic demand, you don't see any clue where it's going to have some, um, some movement or some strength this year. So that's why I'm not so optimistic. Despite of that, we have some very strong signs of our monetary authority, the Brazilian Central Bank. They are going to cut very fast the, the interest rate in 2017. They already said that they have uh, um, they want the pace, the new pace of cuts of the slick rate is going to be 75 base points. And we can see in the end of 2017 something like uh, below two digits, the interest rate of Brazil, the slick rate. My forecast is not 9.75% for the slick rate, but the market are, is working with 9.5%. 9 so it's very likely that we have a very lower interest rate in Brazil right now. What about inflation? Well, the good news is that there are the bad news, né? because we see that uh, the Brazilian economy, the activity is very low right now. So, lower demand, lower inflation. What my forecast for Brazilian CPI, the, the, main, the main CPI index in Brazil is called the PCA. Uh, the, that's the target for the inflation system in Brazil. My forecast for the PCA is uh, 4.7%. The, the target for the Brazilian Central Bank is 4.5%. So, it's very... In, the, in target, the CELIC rate, um, the CELIC, no, the, the PCA, the CPI this year. But again, the, we have a lower inflation because the activity is very, it's going very bad here in Brazil. The, 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 the household don't have any strong no, consumption capacity in Brazil in 2016 and also in 2017, in my opinion. And what can you say about our stock market? Well, there are a lot of optimism in the Brazilian stock market. If you see, the, in the last 12 months, uh, Luceni, we had a very strong hike in the, in the, the Brazilian Ibo Vespa index. What we saw in the Ibo Vespa index it was about 127% climb in the last 12 months in US dollars. It's amazing, it's outstanding growth in the our uh, our main uh, index for our stock market somehow the the capital markets they anticipate the movements in the real economy what see that the stock market move first then we are going to see in 2017 a, a movement in the real assets what we see right now in brazil that it's everything is very cheap uh, in brazil real estate is cheap the working force the wages in brazil are very uh, lower than it was in the previous p past. So all that together make Brazil more attractive for investors. We see, if you see the direct uh, foreign investments in Brazil in 2016, the closed number of the last year, it was about 45 billion dollars in direct investments in Brazil. So again, Brazil somehow is cheaper and more um, uh, the the foreign investor more willing to buy assets in Brazil, that's my feeling to, 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 for 2050. But when you talk about, again, the capital markets and Ibovespa index, 127%, it's a lot. What can you foresee about uh, Trump, China and Brazil? Well, Trump just uh, signed uh, the way, the, they, they quit, quit the Trans-Pacific 
agreement with the countries of the Pacific. Uh, it was a very, very strange movement from Trump, in my opinion, in that because he's delivering all this market from Asia and the Pacific belt to China. Now they just give the, the chance to, to be a more, more strong country in, this, in, the, in the trade in this region. So we need to see what Trump is going to do. Nobody knows for sure what uh, Donald Trump plans for the U.S. economy. And especially what we do, do not know right now is, are the um, side effects of his measures in emerging market economy. If in one hand we see a more closed and less globalized the United States of America, uh, they want to make an uh, improvement in their infrastructure se sector. So the demand for um, raw materials like iron ore, like um, uh, oil, like everything that we produce here in Brazil, can, we can have some advantage of that. But again, if you do a very, uh, very um, strong uh, war against China, a, uh, a trade war with China, perhaps the China demand uh, drops and Brazilian economy can so we don't know yet that's true and about China uh, I don't know the, the China, China economy is facing some problems uh, that they need to address first of them uh, of these problems is the domestic demand they need to boost domestic demand I don't know how they're going to do that again Brazil right now made some substantial changes and the new the new administration the federal administration right now is very willing to make reforms, very strong reforms in the Brazilian uh, economy. They did already a cap for Brazilian uh, expenditure, uh, in the, the fiscal expenditure in Brazil. It's good news, in my opinion. And it's very likely they are going, they are going to make uh, the other reforms, especially the pension, pension reform that they are going to do in, by the end of the semester in Brazil, in the first half of 2017. But again, there, we won't have growth for sure in 2017, but we can address some problems in Brazilian imbalances in the households and companies' balances. How do you see the scenario in our politics and the investors' confidence? Well, I do believe, first, in the Brazilian political scenario, it's a very mess. The least I can say that's very complicated right now. Uh, we have a very, a very serious investigation called Lava Jato, car wash investigation, that is held by Juiz Sergio Moro, Sergio Moro Jude, in, uh, in Brazil. It's a very, it's an international scandal, in, uh, this, this, probe, this probe investigation. And names like uh, the key, uh, key persons near the president, and even the present president, Michel Temer, are enrolled in this process, so it's strange. But again, every, everyone that invests in Brazil, foreign owners, know that Brazil has some, it's not as smooth or easy like investing in Europe or in the United States. But I, I, I don't believe that it's a very bad news to Brazil, the political scenario, <clears throat> for one reason. We need to compare Brazil with our peers. Okay, doing, Brazil, doing business in Brazil is complicated. For sure it's complicated. It's a little bit confusing, yes, but doing business in Russia, in China, in India is also very difficult. <clears throat> so uh, we have these problems um, in political field for sure, we have these problems. But again, I do believe that we have uh, also a, a chance to outperform. We have a lot, again, Brazil is cheap. And as we are talking before our interview, I really do believe that Brazil have chance to have a, a change in the, our investment grade, uh, not by standing poor, fit, whatever. Why I do believe that? First, we have uh, we have improvement in our current account the numbers. Uh, if you compare with the previous short-term past, so to speak, they are better right now. Second. We have adjustment in the wages, real wages in Brazil. If you see in 2004, the average real wage in US dollar in Brazil was $600. In 2010, 11, it was about $1,400, the average um, wage, real wage in US dollars. Right now it's again in $600. So 
somehow Brazil became cheap again. That's another adjustment that we need to do. That's very linked to inflation somehow. But the strangest things in Brazil, very strange thing in Brazil, and Brazil is a very strange country, by the way, and is that we just by the end of 2016, the end of last year, we became a member of the Paris Club. The Paris Club, it's an entity, it's an organization that, um, that they, they, are made, they are made by creditors in the world market. So Brazil has a, a strange situation that we are creditors in strong, in strong currency in US dollar and we have problem with domestic debt in our currency. It's strange that. So all that together it seems, I don't know, it's perhaps by the end of the second, the third quarter of 2017, it's very likely that they change our Perhaps not my, our grade, but our uh, outlook for negative to positive. And you need to, to understand that Brazil is doing, we are doing our homework, so to speak. We changed some laws, we're going to make very substantial change in patient funds, in the pension uh, program in Brazil. And uh, investors do like that. So, uh, some, it's strange, nah? because if you see in economic terms, if you see the real life of Brazilian people, it's not going well, but the financial market is um, moving forward uh, uh, with leggings, with the real world. So they, what we're predicting is a better world in 2018 or in 19. That's my belief. André Perfeito, thank you so much for this interview to us here in Ducas Cup TV. It was a pleasure. If you want, any time you can come here and it's a pleasure to talk with Ducas Cup TV. Thank you. Luciane Miranda to Duke Cop TV.